Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kiaria Tujalo. I'm your session host for this talk. Um, the talk is going to be on introduction and review of Map Complete by Peter Vender Venet. So the talk will be 20 minutes with kicks and answers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this talk about Map Complete. So in this talk, I would like to tell you what Map Complete is how the first year went and how it all got started, a few things I learned, then a second take on what map complete is and what it isn't, so how it fits in the ecosystem and what I want it to be, and what the future might bring for map complete. So I don't think everyone is familiar with map complete, so a very brief introduction. Map complete is three things. First of all, it's a topical map viewer. It's a map viewer where certain points of interest are shown which are interesting for a small group of people. It can be very topical, for example, cyclists or climbing or people who like trees, something like that. Furthermore, it's an easy to use map editor for the points of interest which are shown. Some questions are asked, for example, in the case of a cyclist, if a bicycle pump is shown, it asks uh, which um, vaults are supported. And at last, it's also a way to quickly create and reload thematic maps which have survey capability. So, for example, here is one which shows public bookcases. So you can see it shows public bookcases in Ghent. It asks a few questions, so like for example, who maintains the public bookcase? It shows what is already known, for example, the capacity, the name, if it's indoor or outdoor, it gives it the ability to change those values. And last but not least, you can add a picture here on top. There's already a picture, but it's kind of hidden. So that's map complete in a nutshell. Now, um, how did it get started? Where did it come from? Well, during the first Corona lockdown here in Belgium, I got a somewhat fake email from the Belgian Green Party and they wanted to create something to crowdsource, to get people out, something with nature and forest and if it could, it also should have a road planner and demographic information and pictures, reviews, um, everything you could ever imagine. I was a bit skeptical at first, I have to admit. Um, I wanted to let them use MapContrip, but MapContrip wasn't user friendly enough and it's just not that user friendly and then they mentioned they had some budget and then i promised them to make them something even though it would be ugly i had no front-end experience but i made them something and that first team it was Buurt Natuur BE. it was still a little ugly but that was it, how it looked like so it had pictures and you could add a few questions so it was really basic um, that was also a little over a year ago, so the first change set, made by me, purely for testing, was uh, made the 27th of May. And from then on, once Buurt Natuur was launched, it was pretty much a success. So by now we have over 4,000 change sets, made by, 400, by over 600 contributors, so that's quite a success. The original Buurt Natuur so around a thousand change sets with over a hundred contributors. So you can clearly see the change and the marketing of Buurt Natuur into two big jumps there. So yeah, that was already a success. After the first team for nature reserves, a second team quickly followed. This time funded by Brussels Mobility. They had a small map and every municipality had their own map or their own sheet on their website where the bicycle pumps were located. And during Open Summer of Code, uh, um, that's a yearly event by Open Knowledge Belgium where a team of students creates something open source for some client, Cyclofix was developed. Uh, and this was the result. So it's a map with bicycle pumps, bicycle shops, drinking water points, bike cafes, and, and other bicycle-related objects. And so if you click a point of interest, you can see a picture, you can add more information. 
And that too was a runaway success with, uh, I think, over 500 edits made via Map Complete. And after that second team, uh, a third and a fourth team quickly followed. So some of those teams are made by me. Uh, some of them are official teams made by other people, which I pulled in. And there's even a whole bunch of uh, unofficial teams. Also learned a lot of things. Uh, so some of the things I learned is that pragmatism works. Better a half as team that's online and that can attract improvements and contributors than something that never materializes. Also, my coding style is like, let's push it out and better a few small changes per day than one big change that takes months to develop. Uh, furthermore, um, MapComplete has been a hit with municipalities, governmental offices, NGOs. They love it because it gives them a way to easily maintain and contribute their data. Also, especially touristical agencies, we have like six or seven of them and they all need the same data. MapComplete offers them a way to bring all the data together to let all those organizations work together in the same way on the same stack. Lots of them are already using OpenStreetMap, but this makes it a lot easier for them. And they are really interested in it. They're even so interested in it that they are willing to pay for teams to be developed or for maintenance to be done. So that's really cool that they love it that much. Hosting your own service is overrated. MapComplete is a 100% static website. Everything is hosted at GitHub Pages and everything uses external APIs. So edits are handled by the OSM API, fetching features goes via overpass, images go to Imgur. I'd love to send them to Wikipedia or Mapillary one day, but I haven't come around implementing that. And unofficial teams are sideloaded via the URL, so I don't need any hosting space myself, which is a huge relief because servers break and need maintenance, and that's something I don't want to deal with. Furthermore, another thing I learned is that the OSM community is great. I was never alone in my journey. Already from the start, I had lots of enthusiasm from various contributors. Sometimes I got pull requests out of the blues, out of the blue with refactorings, with new teams, with translations. Um, the moment I set up a, a, a translation website, which makes it easier to contribute translations, I suddenly had tons of translations in Japanese, Russian, uh, so it's really cool to see so much response from the community. Um, there are even already a few forks running uh, with different teams. Uh, so that's also something that's pretty cool. And um, as having a community works pretty well, I'm also trying to build a small map complete community. So there is a telegram room where people working with MapComplete gather where hints are exchanged like, hey, how can I do this in a custom team? How could I do that? Uh, I have this bug. Can you help me out? So that really helps to spread the love. Um, it helps me to see what people are working on, what they could need. Uh, it helps with uh, officializing teams. Uh, so that's a very big added value. And it's also great to have a community when stuff goes wrong. So, for example, if I were to break my hip while roller skating, and if I were to end up like that, uh, having the community is really great. Um, especially Joost helped me out to pick up the slack when I was not available. Uh, and I'm also trying to hate in the bus factor. So, a few contributors which contributed via pull requests previously, uh, now have access to the main repository, which means that if two contributors work together, they can roll out a small change to a team without my intervention. So that's also something that really works. So I'd like to say a big thank you to the entire community around MapComplete for all the changes and all the improvements that they have already made. So, um, the last thing that I learned uh, about MapComplete is that 
edit quality is decent. So if the team is uh, well worked out, if the questions are clear, then we see that the edits are good, that decent data is added. A few issues I've seen is that some people created test points which got deleted then again, uh, after adding a very clear warning, hey, this is gonna be added to everyone, so don't wait for testing. I didn't really see it anymore. I also didn't see any vandalism yet, which is also great. However, there is a fail safe in there. If people have at least one unread message, they cannot create a new point and they are they are asked to read their messages first before editing new points. So if you see someone adding lots of new points incorrectly with MapComplete, just send them a message and it will be blocked. Um, at last, a currency of the location of a new point is often good enough. It could be better sometimes, but I'm planning to make a better location input, so that should also be fixed. So, this is what I learned in the past year while building MapComplete. Another important thing I learned and I thought a lot about is what MapComplete should be and what MapComplete should not be. So it's really the vision of where MapComplete should fit into the OpenStreetMap ecosystem. And so I'm going to ask the question again, what is MapComplete exactly? So first of all, it should be really, really user friendly. It should be so user friendly that your grandma should be able to use it and your grandma should be able to contribute data back. Now, of course, having something that's easy to use is difficult, especially combining lots of features is difficult to combine with something that's easy to use. And that's a fundamental trade-off that everything has to make, every piece of software. If we have a look to OpenStreetMap editors, you can see that if you plot them, easier to use versus more features, that you have something like this. For example, Street Complete, Street Complete is really easy to use, but of course, it doesn't have a lot of features. At the other extreme, we have JOSM. JOSM is harder to use, it has some learning curve, but it packs a ton of features, which makes it hard to use, and then the sweet spot in the middle is the ID editor. ID has most of the features, it's pretty feature complete, but it's also relatively easy to use, so it's in the middle. As I want MapComplete to be as easy to use, I do not want it to be a full editor. At the moment that a contributor is complaining that, oh, I want to edit five points at the same time and it's too much clicking work, or I want to modify geometry, or I want to modify relations. That is the point where I say, you have outgrown map complete, please switch to the ID editor or switch to the JOSM editor. Also, um, another way of sidestepping complexity is by not showing every feature at once. I only show features which are interesting to a single group of people which is a way to reduce complexity. If you only care about artworks, you'll only see artworks and you'll just focus on that. So this means that MapComplete can also be placed on this graph and I want MapComplete to be somewhere around here. So I want MapComplete, some teams will be more difficult to use, I will tend more to that side, others will be simpler to use, but they will all be in the vicinity there. So, something else that I want MapComplete to be is, it's a trap. Namely, it's a trap for people to start contributing and to pull them in into the OpenStreetMap community. So, uh, I, I want to say to people, hey, I made you an interesting map showing features about something. And then we can go to, to a community which really cares about these features. And we get not only give them a map, we also give them a way to help contribute the data, to add missing points, to add missing data. They can add it themselves, we empower them to do it. And that's also the way that they discover OpenStreetMap. They discover that there's other teams. They discover that they can download the data and they can do stuff with it. They, they discover it 
and that's a way to pull them in. And at the same time, MapComplete also tries to teach people step by step about the technicalities of OpenStreetMap. For example, at first they just get shown the answers like, hey, you can answer this, this and this. However, after 25 change sets, apart from the answer, there's also at the bottom the tag shown which is added to the point or to the feature, which lets them learn about the tags after a while while at the same time not scaring off new people because a new contributor is only going to be confused by the little key value combination at the bottom. And that's the way how MapComplete grows together with the contributor. For example, at 500 change sets, the contributor is allowed to make their own team with editing capabilities. So. It's one of the gamification concepts in MapComplete. And something else MapComplete should excel at, uh, as I mentioned, it's a way to show features interesting to a certain group of people. This means that you can make a niche map, which is interesting to a small community. It's like a Trojan horse. You give them something they really need. And they will run with it and they'll love it. And you can create really, really niche, really specific maps with it. For example, um, you also made one for facade gardens, so small gardens at the front of houses. Another very niche one is cycle streets. It's something you'll only see in Flanders and the Netherlands. And the cycling association loves it and every time the topic comes up there's someone from the Belgian Cycling Association which gets out this map and this sparks a lot of interest in, in that community. So um, you can create a very niche map yourself as well. I'll do another talk, uh, more workshop where I'll really help creating it. In a nutshell you create a JSON file. There's a, a page on MapComplete which helps you do that. It gets encoded in Base64. That gets loaded into the official MapComplete. And it's already live. It's already usable and shareable. For example, this is how it looks like. The whole bunch of text is an encoded JSON file. And then that will result in... This one will result in an open fitness map. Which shows like these icons and you can add... You can add outdoor fitness stations like this one with this piece of text. So you don't need to ask my to ask me to create a new team. You can just create it yourself. I can create a very root and polished team in like five minutes. Uh, an open street mapper with no with lots of open street map experience but no no open no map complete experience should be able to make one in about one hour with the introduction. So go on and create your own team, even if it's hardly used, even if only you intend to use it, or if it's for a small group of people, go on, create it, but let it grow, share it, and it always attracts more interest than you'd expect at first. So yeah, MapComplete really is a map machine. Go on and use it. So. Note that it's pretty clear what MapComplete should be. Um, one small slide for what I want to do in the future with it. First of all, I'd like to develop it further, mostly professionally. So for example, I had interest from the UK, which wanted to use it to create an address importer with it. Uh, I had some other parties interested. If you are interested as well and want me to create something for you, please get in touch. I also want to grow the MapComplete community further. Um, and related with it, I'd also love to see more official teams and more translations, so send them in into GitHub. And at last, the custom team generator is still not really user-friendly. I'd like to improve it. And for that, I'm looking to do SMF to uh, get a microgrant. And if I get that, I'll um, improve that as well. But of course, it's hard to predict the future.
take it was all in the way. If you are interested in creating your own team, follow the next talk where I'll explain the role in detail. I'll join the Telegram room at which that matrix is all. Have a look at the source code here. It's really an interesting thing. I really like it. So, please get in 